Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the seventh continent, which is a very neat, very clever, very original adventure storytelling card game that's on Kickstarter right now, which I'm going to do a run through so you guys can learn a little bit about what it's like to play. Although, I got to warn you right up front, there will be story spoilers in this run through. It's, it's, it's pretty much unavoidable, uh, you know, because the whole game is about telling story, and for me to be able to demonstrate how the various systems work, I will have to show some tiny, tiny snippets. Now, I'm going to try and minimize it. And in fact, the interesting thing is, the Seventh Continent, it this, it's, tells one long, epic story that's going to take you 20 to 30 hours to finish. And you know, that story is not broken up into a whole bunch of little individual scenarios, and you could do this scenario and this scenario. It's one unbroken, it's like a novel. It's a super long, epic story. Now, the interesting thing is, well, one of many interesting things is, the game comes with a tutorial. It's like a little standalone mini adventure that the rules suggest you play just so you can learn how the basic mechanisms work before you get into the real story. And now the prototype I've got is that tutorial adventure. So, I'm going to show you just a tiny sliver of the tutorial, which is just a tiny sliver of the overall epic 20 to 30 hour long game. So, you're going to have a little bit of the tutorial spoiled, but hopefully it won't be too bad. And I'll still, even then, and try to minimize the impact. So there'll still be tons and tons of stuff to discover in this tutorial. So don't get me wrong, but I just had to warn everybody. Now, the next thing, I got a caveat here. Like I said, Seventh Continent takes 20 to 30 hours to play. But the developers are not insane. They don't expect anybody to play this game for some crazy marathon, what would that be? Um, literally, day and a half straight, uninterrupted session because that would destroy people. I mean, you could do it, but that would be crazy. Uh, never mind the fact that if you played it in one unbroken session, by the time you're done, you will have built an island on your table that nobody has a table big enough. I mean, the table in Doctor Strangelove wouldn't be big enough to support the entire world you will explore. So, the developers came up with a very cool save system, which is very much like what would you call it? Like, like a video game, like an RPG adventure video game where anytime you want, you know, you played for a half an hour, you played for an hour, you can stop and save your progress. And then when you want to pick up again and play later, you can restore your save game right back to where you were and continue. It's really brilliant. So the first thing I want to show you is how that save system works. Now, some people might not care. Some people might want to say, to heck with that, that's just logistics. I want to get to the adventure. And for those people, I say, hit the little eye up in the top top right corner of the screen, and you can skip ahead to the actual adventure section instead of watching me restore my save game. Because Jen and I, we've been playing this game for about an hour now, and I am going to pick up where our adventure left off. And so I'm going to have to restore our save. But if you don't care about that, hit the I, follow the link in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, you're still here? Right. Let's go on ahead and restore my save. Now, you'll notice there's two decks of cards here. This deck basically represents the world I'm in. You know, all the different encounters I could have, the adventures, and we're going to put this aside because this is what we're about to explore. But first we have to restore our save. This deck represents our save game. There's several things in here, starting with the last location we were in. When Jen and I stopped playing last night, we decided to stop after we had explored this old spooky graveyard and we had checked out the submarine. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything about this submarine. Spoiler alert! There's a submarine somewhere on the island in the tutorial mission. But Jen and I, we have not actually gone into the, the submarine yet because to get in there, we have to um, we have to do a test. And if we fail it, the penalty for we don't know what the penalty is, but we're worried that the penalty might make this submarine disappear forever and we would forever lose the chance to explore it. This is a game full of important consequences to your actions. So you have to be careful. And so Jen and I have decided we're not going to explore this now. We're going to go off and try to find some other stuff first that will help us get into this sub. But anyway, this is the room we last left our heroes. Like I said, there's a spooky graveyard, there's a mysterious submarine, and there is an exit going east. So that's where we are going to pick up again. So here's our little markers. Now I don't actually have real markers. I don't know what the real markers are going to look like. You can go to the Kickstarter page and see what the final components look like, because everything you're seeing here is prototype. But in the meantime, I'm just using Jen's neat little cool uh, glass gl meeples that she makes, uh, which will be for sale at Essen this year. Um, Anyway, so here's where we are. This is where we left off. What else is in our save game? Well, we've got 
our shoulder bag, which contains all the information we have collected up to this point in the story. And in this shoulder bag, well, we have learned that this bush will cure us from poison. And so if we ever explore, and we have actually found some places on the island that have this bush. When we first saw this bush, we just thought, oh, it's, it's a bush. It's just a piece of art. It doesn't really mean anything. But it's actually a cure for poison. And because we now have this information, if we ever get poisoned, we can travel back to where we saw those bushes and cure our poison. But if we, did not, if we had not found out this information, if, if we had never found it, we would never know and the bushes wouldn't be meaningless to us. Another one, same kind of thing, we also discovered a way to turn seaweed into cord, into string that we can use to build tools. So because we have these two bits of knowledge and we keep them in our shoulder bag, these are additional things. Whenever we find seaweed or this bush, we know it has a use. The game doesn't tell us. It just looks like seaweed or a bush on the card. But because we have this stored information, which some players might not find, but we found, what else do we have? Well, we've got some experience points. We've earned three experience points so far. And there will be certain points the rules say we've never found them yet, but there will be certain points in the game where you can turn these experience points into cool super ideas that will give us all kinds of really great powers and abilities, and not, not powers, but abilities, items, uh, you know, tools, stuff like that. So we're saving up our experience. We've got three experience points so far. We've also found this gear wheel. We have no idea what it's for. Uh, no idea at all. I suspect it might have, it might be important for the submarine, who knows. But um, we we're carrying this around until we eventually find a use for it. That's what this little symbol here is for, to remind us if we ever see this symbol as we're exploring, we know that's where we can use the gear wheel. So we're carrying that around. And finally, the most important thing in our shoulder bag, the curse. At the beginning of the game, as part of setup, your, your uh, adventuring party gets struck by a curse. At least one curse, although you can have up to five curses if you want to increase the difficulty of the adventure. And the different curses have different effects. We are, under, we are working under the curse of the voracious goddess. And before the adventure, the 20 hour adventure is over, we're hoping to cure ourselves of this curse. So anyway, this is all permanent information that we carry with us everywhere in our shoulder bag. And as we find more information, we'll put it in the shoulder bag. So, what else is in the save game? Well, hey, here's me. This is me, and where is it? And here's Jen. So, let's see everything there's to know about me. Well, I am the explorer Ferdinand French word. Um, I am an explorer. And uh, this is all the stuff I've collected personally. Stuff in the shoulder bag, this is group. Stuff in here, this is personal. So this is me, I've got a special power. I can be sneaky. If I have stealth cards, I can use them to sneak past obstacles. Let's move these dice and whatnot out of the way. So that's an ability I have. I also have three ideas. This symbol means it's an idea. I have an idea of how to build a bag. And I've been carrying this around, waiting until I can find a location that has some leaves. Because if I can find some leaves, it becomes much easier for me to build a bag and it won't take as much energy. And once I have this bag built, I can carry more items. I also ha know of, a, I, I, can, I can have an idea about how to find a secondary route. So if we ever face an obstacle that we just don't want to deal with, I could use my idea card to find a secondary route and, and basically discard the, uh, you know, uh, basically, you know, event adjacent to where you are. So I can basically use this to discard an event next to me if we just don't want to deal with it because I can find a secondary route. Um, right. And then also, I'm a bit of a gourmet. Um, so if we ever eat food, I can make sure we get more energy out of the food because I can really appreciate it. These are the three ideas I carry. And in a two-player game, it's right here on a shoulder bag, in a two-player game, I can carry up to three ideas and three bonuses and I can have three items. So, my, my head is full of ideas. I cannot have another idea unless I use one of these or discard one to forget about an idea. What else do I have in my own personal? Well, turns out I am paranoid and I am tired. Jen and I, we tried to ach accomplish something a little while ago in the adventure and it failed miserably on us and as a result, we became, we're both tired and paranoid. Now, in and of itself, this doesn't matter, but this can really hurt us if certain bad events happen to us. The more negative red events we have, the more collecting additional events will hurt us as a group. So I am tired and paranoid. I've got three ideas. And then the last bit, the, this is an item and this is an item. I have two items. Now, these cards are used as a reminder of how many charges. This item 
has three charges. This item has two charges. So I'll take this item out first. Remember, it has three items. It's my walking pole, which I made early on. I had to burn through three cards to do it. No, actually, that's not true. Um, I, we found some bamboo in the, in, the, in the woods at one point, and then that's when I used my idea to build this pole. And this pole helps me walk, helps me balance, and helps me swim. So it's a really handy pole. And like I said, it started with four charges. I've used it once, so I have three charges left with my pole. So that's what, uh, when I'm playing, I use the dice. Later on, if we save and this still has three charges, I'll put it back in my stack and put a three on it to in so I can remember that it has three charges left. That's one item I've got. And then the other item I've got, which I have two charges of, is some delicious crab meat. Two of them, in fact. We went hunting and we found some crab meat. And whenever we eat it, as a group, uh, we will be able to restore energy. But here's the thing. If you look at it, um, we get to restore three cards worth of energy. But if we use this in a place where there's fire, so if we cook our meat before we eat it, we'll get to restore six cards worth of energy. So I've been carrying this meat around for a while now until one of us, Jen or I, has a good idea about how to make fire. Because once we make fire, we're going to eat and get a lot of energy back, which is good because we're in danger of running out of energy. So that's me. I've got some crab meat. I've got a walking pole. I've got three ideas. And I'm tired and paranoid. Now, let's take a look at Jen. She's next up in our save deck, excuse me. Let's see here. So, Jen is Kellen McCluskey, who is also an explorer. Her special power is, if she has cards with the will, will you know, like, if she, she's a willful person. So, if she has two cards with will in them, she can discard them to ignore, to ensure that she does not have to suffer a, a bad consequence. If she doesn't want to have to, you know, take more injuries or something like that, she can give up. She can be strong-willed and push her way through it. Me, I can use stealth cards to avoid mandatory a um, actions. Jen can use will cards to avoid bad results if things go bad. So that's her. She, like me, is paranoid and tired because we both failed at the same time on that big, epic... Well, I'm not going to say what it was, but we tried and we failed. We failed epically and that's why we're both paranoid and tired. Tired because it was exhausting. Paranoid because whenever characters fail something when they're together, if you're playing a multiplayer game, you become paranoid of each other because you don't know if you can trust each other anymore. Now, we can get rid of this tiredness and this paranoia, but we have to spend time doing it. So we just haven't had the time to do it yet because we're constantly exploring. Now, Jen has an idea of how to build a bow. She's had this for a long time, but she's never built it because she's looking for a place where she can get some wood. Because if, uh, by default, to build a bow, Jen has to basically draw three cards. And that's expensive. You, um, that, uh, uh, that, that would be bad. So, but if Jen can find a place where there's some wood, she only has to, three minus two equals one, and she could build a row real easy. If she could find a place with cord and wood, um, three minus one minus two means she could build the, the bow immediately. So she's carrying this idea around, waiting until she can find the right place. Now, she could build it anytime she wants, but it'll be hard, and she'll have to discard three cards, which would be bad. Now. Um, Jen also has one item. It has five charges, so we get a little five out. It is this splint, which Jen has already used once to because I, I was injured when I tripped and fell or something like that. So Jen's used it once to injure me. Now the interesting thing is this started out as a splint with three uses, and Jen used it once, so it went down to two. But then because this has the keyword of serenity. And Jen had an idea of how to build pan pipes, which also had the keyword of serenity. Jen, instead of building a separate item of pan pipes, she used this idea to supplement her, her splint. And now this is a super splint that can do all kinds of stuff. And this was down to two, but then it got charged back up to three. So that's why Jen has five charges on this super splint. So, that's us. I've restored my state where I've got some meat, I've got a walking pole, Jen's got a super splint, Jen wants to build a bow, I want to build a bag, we're both tired and paranoid, we have a shoulder bag full of equipment, we are standing over here next to the mysterious submarine. One last bit of our save. There are two decks in here. This is our action deck, and this is our action deck discard. 
Our action, whenever we want to create, do an action, we have to draw cards from the action deck. So like I was saying, if Jen wants to build her bow right now with no wood or cord around, we would have to d d draw three cards from our action deck. And the, the, the emptier this gets, the closer we get to losing. To, to dying because of exhaustion and the curse that besets us will destroy us. So we don't want to draw cards from here unless we have to. When we draw cards, they go from our action deck to our action discard, deck discard. And you can see we have discarded a whole bunch of cards on our adventure so far. We need to transfer cards back from our discard pile back to our draw deck so that we are in less danger of being exhausted and losing. That's where eating the crab meat comes in, because if we eat, we can, get, we can recover our energy and get these cards back. But we don't want to eat until we can figure out a way to make fire. So that's the situation, folks. We're over by the mysterious submarine. Hopefully that's going to be the only main spoiler I give you in terms of story. There's a summary, but I'm not going to tell you what's in there. We are, you can see we're about half and half. We've gone halfway through our action deck, so we're half completely exhausted. Um, and Jen wants to build a bow. I want to build a bag. I'm a gourmet eater, so I'm just salivating and getting that meat. And I can, get us pa I can find a secondary route if we need to. So that's the situation. And now here is the other deck. This is the deck that represents all our adventures on this island, numbered from 1 to 5 to 8 to 13 to 15 and so on. This is like the pages of a choose-your-own-adventure book as you explore. This, this card we're on now was number 17. When we first arrived here, we read the flavor text, we flipped it and said, boom, here we are. And, uh, you know, and then we had some little adventures there and then we saved our game. So I've restored our save and here is the rest of the world waiting to be explored. So I'll just put that up there. Okay. Is that good? Let's just move all these down here a little bit so they all line up on the camera. Okay. This is us. This is the world. And there's a few other cards. These are randomly generated events. You never really know until you flip them. These are, we could become injured. You know, so these are additional state cards that'll hit us. This is the last experience. Remember, we have three experience points. We can earn one more experience point. And here's some more food cards, some fish and some more crab if we do more hunting or fishing, which we haven't done for a while. But that's okay because we really need to eat this stuff. Okay. I have restored the save. And now, while that sounded like a lot, that's because I was explaining everything to you. Um, it, takes, it takes about a minute to restore your save game and pick right up where you left off. Here's where we are, where we left off. And the game is now set up. We're ready to start continuing to explore the world. And now, if you'd like to watch that, again, remember, hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen so you can go to the gameplay run-through because we just did a setup. You can go in five, four, three, two, one.